Two teams collide, but only one will survive. We'll find out who's got the stuff of champions on the destination vacation season of Arena! Welcome to Arena, everyone, the show that turns multiplayer games into competitive sport. I'm Lee Remen, and thank you for joining us, because today we're continuing down the road to this year's Hall of Champions, where our teams will compete for that all-expenses-paid week of fun in the sun in beautiful Hawaii. Now, last time on the show, the Corpse Factory produced another team of dead bodies. Corpse Factory! As they easily dispensed of Team Stomp, because now they're Team Stomp. So today, they're going for their third win in a row, and a possible spot in that Hall of Champions. And they're taking on Team Mazota. Now our squads will go at each other, first in Guilty Gear X2, then Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, and we'll finish it up with Unreal Tournament 2004. Let's go over to Kevin, who can barely keep from punching each other in the console pit. Kevin. All right, thanks, Lee. Now today our players will go at it in a classic fighting game that's gotten a next generation facelift. It's Guilty Gear X2 on the PlayStation 2. This game features a bizarre cast of anime-inspired characters and an innovative counterattack system, which well, more often than not, it will spell the difference between victory and defeat. Now our champs will enter the ring playing as May, while our challengers, well, they'll play as Bridget. But enough of my babbling. Let's see what happens as we kick things off with Guilty Gear X2. One. And Guilty Gear X2. And up first, it's Howard D 2.0 versus Nasty for the Corpse Factory. And a fun fact about Bridget, she's actually a cross-dressing schoolgirl who uses a yo-yo as her method of attack. Whatever it is, it's, I'm drooling. I understand that. You don't mind a man face, do you, Lee? Nah. Oh, hey, look, they're fighting. Uh, some flashes of light happened. Someone died. I think it was Bridget that went down, and that would mean that Nasty won round one for his team, Remen. She's a mad man. Two. And round two underway. And then it says, is it a mistake? Did you hear that? That's great video. May using the anchor. She's pulling an anchor. And Juju is now low on health. Pretty evenly matched. This round will not come down to time. There's no time limit. And each player toe to toe. This is close. Bow it looks like Bow Boy has a chance. Just breathe on him. Just a sliver of health left. And, and the there point it was. Totals. An anchor across the man face of Bow Boy 79 sends the cross dresser flying. Three. And our third round of Guilty Gear X2. Heaven or Hail. Time to rock, Raymond. And the Sarkis Dolphin attack right off the bat, chipping away at the health of Winsen 311 for Team Mazota. Been all Corpse Factory so far. The first round an easy one, the second one a little bit more difficult, but the result the same. The shrieks of pain coming out of these characters, almost excited sounding. And Winsen 311 is very low on health here. He's got to be extra careful. He must use that innovative counterattack system to get the win, and he does. A very excited Winsen. As he takes this one for his team, Zoda, and we get to see a little man oh. there. Yeah. Easy, oh. Raymond. Put the pants back on. Four. And our fourth and final round is underway. Guilty Gear X2. Zoda could tie it up here, set it into a tiebreaker. And we shall see as Yojimbo launches a yo yo out midair. Comes back to her, and with the first strike, it's Spectre. So far, the aggressive one here. Raymond? What? Just checking. Checking out these two hot chicks. I know. Beat the snot out of each other with cutlery. Staring a little hard at Bridget, who gets dazed and. Pound to the ground, and she gets taken down. Spectre making a Japanese omelet out of Team Azota. Oh. Well, we didn't see any eight-second knockouts, but the Corpse Factory proved once again that they are the button mashers extraordinaire, taking the console round three to one. But right now, we're going to go down to Flo, who's standing by with Nasty from the winning squad. You said you were playing Guilty Gear forever. What is the secret to your success? Well, with the characters they gave us, the May has a lot of strong attacks, but she's very short range, so we had to try to get him fast, do what we can, and get out. Well, it seems like you have every angle down. Do you feel mm -hmm. that confident about Jedi Academy? We feel very confident about Jedi Academy. Our skills keep on getting better and better as the rounds progress, and we're going to keep on changing up a little bit, but still use a lot of the same techniques, and everything should go great. So you still have some tricks up your sleeve? We still have a couple of mysteries, too. Ooh, excellent. Well, let's meet the rest of your team and your opponent's team, Mazoda. Our team name is Team Mizoda, in honor of the beautiful host of Filter, Diane Mizoda. So we thought we'd uh, pick that name. No, no, no. You pick, pick that name. <laughs> you pick that name. 
Let's do I that over. with the rest of them. <laughs> and you pick the name. I'm here to support. Show our pride for G4, you know. We're all good together. We're all we're hanging out at my friend's place, and you know, some like, drinking oh, was involved. Yeah, probably. we're just, we have a good time. <laughs> just kicking back, watching some TV. We saw the show, Arena, put it on. Said they decided to put a sign up for it on the internet. Well, so, back I mean, in college, we used to play just uh, multiplayer games like Quake and Unreal. The the skills priorities. you pick up in college playing video games that's much more important than reading some book you're not going to remember. I mean, you know. We actually like playing games together, believe it or not. You know, we thought we could prove our stuff, and we wanted some good competition. So we, we thought we could bring it to Arena, and uh, so far, so good. Uh, we're 2-0. and oh. We're looking for the uh, Tournament of Champions. We're really kind of, I guess, on edge and nervy because we need to win this next match, and, uh, well, we need to do as best as, as we best can, as we can. We're not yeah. just winning it. Not it's just to win, it's dominating. Right. It's dominating. dominating. Yeah. We're, if, we, if we do win this show, we're tied to go on, and, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a 50-50 chance. We'll, we'll see what happens. Well, I don't really know how Diane would feel about Team Mizoda's performance, but they'd better step it up here if they want to make her proud. Now, the Corp Factory, they've taken their first step toward their third consecutive victory. And the way they've been playing in Jedi Academy and UT so far, Team Mizoda could be in for a long day and a long ride home. But you never know what's going to happen. So when we come back, we'll see who's better with the sword. And later, we'll break out the big guns in Unreal Tournament 2004. And it's all coming up right here on Arena. Welcome back, everyone, to Arena. Now, before the break, the Corpse Factory, our defending champions, mind you, smacked Team Mizoda around so hard, it would make Clever Lang smile. So let's keep the fur flying and head to the proverbial galaxy far, far away, where Kevin is not so far away, but he's waiting to get it going. Kevin! All right, thanks, Lee. Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, it's set in the Star Wars universe, and it features all of your favorite characters. Now, our teams will go at it in hot, sweaty, two-on-two -two action, oh, yeah. and the weapon of choice, of course, it's a Jedi's bread and butter, the lightsaber. Today's map is Rift Sanctuary, a wide open level where you can run, but you sure can't hide. So grab onto your lightsaber and let's get to the action of Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. What? In Unreal Tournament 2004, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. What am I saying? All four members going at it. They've branched off and they've got their little one-on-one -on -one action going on now. The Force Rip and Force Lightning going at it. And the Corpse Factory emerges victorious from that skirmish. Yeah. <laughs> But that 2 nothing victory in that first battle does not a round win. Boboy79 retreating into the other room momentarily. And Juju comes in with some well-placed saber shots and takes him down cleanly. Executed shots. And brilliantly, there. you see the Corpse Factory turning and running as the team to run away or to find their opponents again. These Corpse Factory team members really know what they're doing here, Kevin. I'm right. Howard Dean, bitch. And Howard Dean takes him down Rick James style. Three to one. Good. Our newcomers might be mounting a comeback. Oh, and there was the Force Pinata move as Foboy gets mowed down. It's 5-1 to one in favor of Corpse Factory. Come on, take him out. And we've seen it time and time again, Kevin. Corpse Factory just systematically destroys their opponent. And now we've got a two-on-two -two matchup. All four members throwing down in the same room. Lightsabers everywhere. I don't think the head-on is looking really well for you, man. And the first casualty from this skirmish is Howard Dean 2.0 as he goes down and... Well, Foboy joins him shortly thereafter. It's 7-1, to one, and Corpse Factory is running away with Jedi Knight. Uh, they've adopted the Kukni strategy, and they're getting slammed on every orifice by every lightsaber on the map, even a team kill there. And it looked like Foboy was taken out by Howard Dean 2.0. We've now got an 8-1, to one, excuse me, an 8 to nothing match on our hands. Mazota running the wrong way on the scoreboard. Howard Dean 2.0 in full retreat. Watch that behind you, Howard Dean. The governor sees all. He's going to California, and Texas, and anywhere. Yeah! Nasty runs into both members of Team Mazota calling for some backup. Let's kill this guy and walk in. It is a furry ass, so I don't want to Yeah, what does he care? He jumps into the fray and starts tussling with the boys. Heaven forbid that something crazy happened oh in the tournament. Oh my lord, Nasty gets downright dirty and destroys both members of Team Mazota. Nice. Well, the scoreboard tells a tale 11 to nothing in favor of the boys in blue are returning champs, the Corpse Factory. Yeah. Two. Oh yeah, get a get a shot of Lee putting his diseased wad of gum on the control room counter. Hey, look, we're in round two. 
Jedi Knight Jedi Academy round two is underway, Kevin. We're seeing some action right off the bat as Dexter and Spectre run right into Winston and Yojimbo. And they, they use their force powers very well there, actually force grabbing the opponent and throwing him off the ring. Do his doom. We should try that. Let's go to the one-on-one overpass with Shaw. See how you do. Pinata tactic. Oh, and there's the force pinata tactic as Boba Fett falls down to the ground, and it's two to nothing for the boys in blue, our returning champs, the Corpse Fat. And they grab me. And time and time again, we see the tag team of Spectre and Dexter using that force grip and following it up with a saber to the back. Three to nothing, they're running away with round two already. And most importantly, these two never get out of each other's sight. Why can't we be that close? Can Why we are you always just, running? I'm Love just you. not sure who I am anymore. I hate you. You love me. Sometimes. You're only 21, you idiot. Maybe we should make it more. Wins in and Yo Jimbo got to put some points on the board, not only to stand a chance here in the Xbox Jedi Knight round. Are you the retainer from Xbox? I uh, know. Dexter. Okay, it's time for a swimming in my apartment's apartment complex spa. And they're squaring off one on one, no double teaming just yet. And that three to nothing lead quickly goes to four to nothing. That's one down. Get the other. And, and now Dexter and Spectre now gagging up on Yo Jimbo. Yo Jimbo, come here. I got a saber for you, buddy. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Squeal like a Jedi. And Yo Jimbo's playing Mario, leaping from head to head. Yeah, the guy's back. The members of Team Corpse Factory, and finally, it's a two on two battle, but down goes Yo Jimbo. Five to negative one on the strength of a team kill. Way to go, newcomers. You guys suck. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Is that what that was? Sometimes you don't. The ring is host our nut. Why is he worried? Yo Jimbo running around like crazy, trying to put some points on the board, leaping from head to head of the members of Corpse Factory, gets caught in the force grab. It's getting good. A flurry of sabers, but he doesn't go down. Someone's going to drop any minute. I sense the intergalactic teabag. And a quick bright spot for Mazota. Oh, but it's quickly eclipsed by yet another team kill. Six to negative one. Okay, He's good. Put the commentary on autopilot. Let's go have a comment. And his Jedi's are better than yours. You're damn right. He can teach you. They're better than yours. 12 to negative one. And Team Mazota might be lucky enough to be on filter. The top ten teams that suck ass. Of course, our home audience will never hear that. 13 to negative one. These guys suck. 13. All right, at this point in the game, I'm having a hard time telling if Corpse Factory is really that good or if their opponents have they just been that bad. But our champs have become connoisseurs of the force pinata technique, which has become their signature move. But right now, we're going to go down to Flo, who's standing by with the dynamic duo of Spectre and Dexter. Kevin, now they're double teaming me. Help! But I think I like it. You know, you guys, that was like shooting fish in the barrel. So yeah. easy, right? Yeah, it was pretty easy. Um, we, in the last episode, had a chance to perfect our uh, force pinata technique. They didn't know what was coming, so... Uh... <laughs> you just killed them! Oh, slaughtered, slaughtered. <laughs> Are you going to keep that up in UT? You know, so far, UT has been our hot box, and so why not stop now? <laughs> I'm so not going to reference a hot box. <laughs> Lee? Well, we have three orange shirts on, so I'll come over there. We'll triple team you to be a triple hot box. It's clear that the champs are filtering out the chumps, and Team Mazota fits squarely into that group. Now, if you thought their last performance in Jedi Academy was impressive, this time around, they simply decimated Team Mazota by a combined score of, get this, 24 to negative one. So our challengers face a serious uphill battle as they've got one more game to prove that, like Charlie in a box, they belong. Now, while our teams get their strategy set for Unreal Tournament 2004, head to our website where you can catch a glimpse of the Hall of Champions and check out your favorite team's profile. And our final game, you won't want to miss it, it's coming up right here on Arena. Oh, hi, Dan. How's it going? Nice How's meeting it going? you. I heard you um, named your team. Team Mazota. Team Mazota. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know, because we watch your show a lot. So. Where, where's your Big team? Big fan. Uh, over there, actually. Are you guys ready to, like, beat these guys in the last round? Heck yeah. Oh, and that's some excitement. There we go. <laughs> How about a Team Mazota? All right. Team Mazota. Team Mazota. Welcome back, everyone, to Arena. Now, before the break, the Corpse Factory virtually assured their golden spot in the Tournament of Champions. But they need to win this game to wrap it up. So let's see if our chance will retain our title with a little UT 2004 as we go to Kevin the PC ring to get it all started. Kevin. Thank you, sir. Our third and final game today is Unreal Tournament 2004, the latest in the squad-based first-person shooter series. Now, the mode for today's game is going to be Assault, where one team tries to meet assigned objectives, and their opponent, get this, Rareman, they try to stop them. Wow! Today's map is Convoy, a moving environment set on the back of huge, futuristic big rigs. So let's see who will emerge victorious in Unreal Tournament 2004. What? Because we're Mazota and... Remember who you're doing this for, Zinn. 
In Unreal Tournament 2004. Unless we get a blowout performance by the newcomer team of Zoda, maybe they can secure some MVP points. Ah, what the hell am I saying? Oh, f Their objective for the red team, Team Mazota, is to extend the boarding platform. The boys in blue, get this, Lee, to defend the boarding platform. Nasty's covering it. Well, Corpse Factory has their strategy down. They're leaving one man back in the turret to eat away at the health that's nasty, taking pot shots at people as they make their way to the boarding platform. And Foboy79 on that platform. That's right. Good to me. Looking to extend it. Hey, got it. Foboy does it. The objective is completed. Good work, Fo. Now they will move on to their next objective, which is to place some explosives on that door and we'll see if they can get there as Dexter's up top of this mini gun. Do you buy? Stop them from doing just that. Inspector with a fully loaded rocket launcher trying to unload on multiple members of Team Mazota. Takes down Yojimbo. That means there's one remaining for the moment. Did you get him, Dex? Yeah, I got him. And the course factory doing a fabulous job of protecting that door. Yojimbo making out with his teammate, and he gets mowed down. We'll have none of that on this map. It doesn't spawn fast enough. If you're unhappy about the amount of time it takes to spawn, maybe you shouldn't frickin' die, you moron. Our technical people are telling us that these spawn rates are predetermined and even. If only we could overclock the timer at this point. The Corpse Factory showing why they're on the way to the Hall of Champions. All right, we're getting mowed down. And Dexter plays hide the salami with Howard Dean's face. Got him. God, this is pathetic, Lee. And I don't believe that Team Mazota has even made it off the initial big rig and over to where the door is even located. You ever heard that song? That's what he needs when you doesn't the ass and song. You know, I do it for the kids. Really do. You do it to the kids. Got me. Spectre dodging a rocket, but he doesn't dodge it for long as Howard Dean finally gets his revenge. There we go. And moves on with his campaign of destruction. And these objectives apparently hard to come by for Team Mazota. Far side, far side. They're on the bridge. And now Rareman will call the remainder of the match by speaking in tongues. Howard Dean had just made it across the bridge, but he got killed on the other end of the bridge in a hail of fire. Cold-blooded. And Team Mazota has reached the door. They planted the explosives. They're inside. Or oh, wait, never mind. They haven't. Oh, yeah. Nope, I was, I was wrong. I thought I saw something. Yeah, yeah whatever. This, on around this was over. And it's a good thing Miss Mazota left the studio. Right on. I want those rockets, baby. Bye. Give me the rockets. Third date. All right. Rocket. <laughs> Two. The second round is underway. Of course, Factory on O. I'm struggling to regain conscious after the coma-inducing round one that Mazota put on. And within 30 seconds, they've achieved that first objective. And now they've got to plant the explosives on the door. Spectre has planted the explosives on the door. The door has blown up, and already Team Corpse Factory is running away with this round. Yeah, why don't you shooting at the other guy? You heard that warning of friendly fire by someone with the Corpse Factory. Clearly from them, Zoda doesn't have the skill necessary to kill each other. Foboy79 inside trying to defend the switch, and, well, he goes down like his teammates. You're kidding me, right? And Nasty makes his way up top. Dexter completes the third objective in the map. And Dexter is already posed to complete the fourth. The side doors open. The side doors have been open. And the Corpse Factory is well on their way to taking round two in record time. Let's do it. Trailer. And I already see members of the Corpse Factory on the nuke trailer. They've got to infiltrate the Nexus missile trailer and then launch the missiles. And Dexter has completed the objective. Zin, jump in a gun, dude. They've got to watch out for the turret. Finally, someone from Team Mazota gets their act together. It's Foboy79. Trying to lay down a wall of lead and stop the Corpse Factory from running away with round two. Hop inside, here we go. And Dexter leaps onto the boarding platform. Unopposed thus far there, we finally see a member of Team Azota, and he stands there trying to complete the objective. Crouch with a shield gun, taking a little damage, and he has completed the objective. This round is over. Thank God I'm going home. Good round. Good. Oh fast, man. Well, apparently, Team Mazota got a little flustered after meeting their namesake before the round began because they just could not get their act together and they completely ran out of time. But on the other end of the spectrum, the Corpse Factory worked with military precision and completed their objectives with a time of, get this, 4 minutes and 34 seconds. So with wins in Guilty Gear X2 and Jedi Knight and Jedi Academy, our champions take the match along with copies of Guilty Gear X2 Jedi Academy and the two DVD special edition of Unreal Tournament 2004. Now, as for today's losers, let us have to do whatever it is they wish with their autographed photos of their inspiration, Diane Mazzotta. Lovely. Taking home MVP honors with dominant performances all across the board. Yeah. It's Dexter. Let's go to Flo, who's standing with the champ. Yes, champion. You guys yeah. win bootay.
Maria. Good job. You're moving on to the Tournament of Champions. Do you know anything about your competition? Uh, we've heard of Team Kaizen, so uh, we say bring it on. Excellent yeah, job, you guys. Congratulations. You Please. say bring it on. Be careful what you wish for. Now, it wasn't a lock before that round began, but after their impressive showing in UT 2004, the Corpse Factory won the match and claimed the fourth and final spot in our Tournament of Champions. Now, the competition is fierce in the Hallowed Hall, especially with the trip to Hawaii on the line. You can almost smell the sunscreen. Ah, now we're closing in on destination vacation, so next time our teams are going to let it all hang out in our round robin semifinals where they're going to only play one game. Yeah, you guessed it. Unreal Tournament 2004. And it's all going to happen one place right here on one show, Arena.